Hello everyone. Welcome back to Saturday Science Home Edition. Uh, we had some technical difficulties here. I think we've gotten it all sort sorted out, so thank you for your patience. Uh, this is Saturday Science Home Edition, brought to you by the Wisconsin Alumni Research Foundation, the Mortgage Institute for Research in partnership with the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Our first event this morning is a Storytime Science with my friend Sam Mulroney. Sam, are you there? Hi, Wes. How are you? Awesome. I think, I hope everyone can hear you at home. We had a little bit of trouble. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to read today, Sam. Sure. Well, welcome to Saturday Science at Home Edition Storytime Science. And my name is Sam from the Discovery Outreach team at the Discovery Building. And I'm going to be your host for Story today. And we actually have two great books for you. Uh, the first one we're going to be reading right now is called The Magic Crystal, and it's a fiction or make-believe story about a young girl and a special crystal that leads her on adventures. And later on today, I'm going to be reading a second book that is actually a non-fiction book, meaning it's based on facts, and that will give us a closer look at minerals and crystals and gemstones and things like that. But first up is a book called The Magic Crystal. Very cool. Well, Sam, let's dive right into that. So whenever you are ready, we yeah. can get started with this book. And yeah, I would love to remind everybody that if they have pictures of gemstones or crystals or rocks at their own house to post those in the comments, our story is going to take about 10 minutes to read, but we want to hear about other questions you might have or other cool things you might have found already at Saturday Science at Home Edition. So be sure to write your name in the chat and where you're watching from, and we'd love to chat after this story. All right. So here we go with The Magic Crystal by D.A. Tony Chingo. All right. Alyssa was not having a good day. Her older brother had been fighting with her all afternoon. Her mom kept giving her jobs to do, like feed the baby, change the baby, give the baby his bath and her baby brother just didn't seem to want to stop crying. It was almost more than a seven-year-old girl could bear. All she wanted to do was go to her room and get away from everyone. And so that's just what she did. The chair in Alyssa's room was large and comfortable, and as she curled up in it, she began to think about the day's events. She wished her big brother wouldn't pick on her so much. And she wished that her mother wouldn't give her so many jobs to do. And she wished her baby brother wouldn't cry so much. She just wished her life could be different. Suddenly, her bedroom window blew open. The room got very dark, and she heard a loud bang and saw a puff of white smoke. When the smoke cleared, she saw the strangest sight she had ever seen. There, standing in the middle of the room, a funny little man with a long white beard, a blue robe, and a blue pointy hat. Hello, Alyssa, he said in a deep, gruff voice. I am the Wizard of Wishes, and you seem to have been wishing for a lot of things today. You seem like a nice young lady, and I will show you how to make your wishes come true. Then he reached inside his robe and pulled out a beautiful spinning crystal. As it spun, it reflected every color of the rainbow, and the colors sparkled and danced. When you want to make a wish, he said, you must squeeze the crystal very tightly between your hands so that it stops spinning. Then your wish will be granted. In an even deeper and gruffer voice, he said, But you must never let go of the crystal. For if you drop it or lose it, well, even I'm afraid. I even don't know what will happen to you. And then there was another puff of smoke and the wizard vanished. But before the smoke cleared, she heard his deep voice say, Goodbye, Alyssa. Good luck. While the crystal spun in her hands, Alyssa wondered what she should do. Could the wizard have been telling the truth? There was only one way to find out. She squeezed the crystal tightly in her hands and thought about her rotten day and wished she could just get away from everyone for a while. Suddenly, she felt quite dizzy and the room seemed to be spinning. And then, she wasn't in her room anymore. She didn't know what was happening, so she closed her eyes and waited. When the dizziness passed and she didn't feel like she was spinning anymore, Alyssa opened her eyes and found herself in the middle of a desert. The sun was awfully hot and the sand was even hotter. 
There were a few palm trees and a small pond of water in front of her, but other than that, there was nothing but sand for as far as she could see. She walked to the top of a sand dune and looked in every direction, but there was nothing to be seen but more sand. She was truly away from everything here. She went back to the trees and sat near the water, hoping someone would come along. Alyssa sat there for what seemed like forever, but no one came. This was certainly not what she had wanted. It was so hot. I wish she were somewhere cool with at least some people around. She didn't realize it, but she had been holding the crystal very tightly as she thought about where she would like to be. And all at once, the dizziness and spinning feeling came back and she wasn't in the desert anymore. She was standing by a stream in a cool, damp forest. The trees must have been hundreds of feet tall because she couldn't see the tops of them. And there were strange ferns and plants that she had never seen before. And there on the muddy bank of the stream were footprints. Thank goodness, at least there was someone here. She started to follow the tracks in the mud and soon she came to a clearing with a very strange little village in the center. There were mud huts and open fires and people. At least Alyssa thought there were people. They were all over, not really standing upright and had, a very, had very long arms and huge heads. Everyone was clothed in what looked like animal skins and they all had long shaggy hair. The men carried clubs and even the women and children had poles or sticks in their hands. And now they had noticed her. Soon everyone was gathered around Alyssa and it was getting mighty uncomfortable. The men grunted and muttered at her. The women pulled at her long brown hair and the children poked and prodded her with their sticks. This was much worse than any torment her brother had ever put her through. Just when she thought she couldn't take it anymore, Everyone stopped and turned their heads toward the forest. Something was coming and it was making an awful lot of noise. Alyssa could see trees being brushed aside and knocked over. Whatever this was, it was going to be big. And then the last tree was pushed aside and there it was. Standing at the edge of the clearing was a 50 foot tall dinosaur and it looked hungry. The villagers had started to scatter and Alyssa was left alone in the clearing. The beast was looking at her as if it were wondering if she would make a tasty snack. And Alyssa certainly didn't want to end up being a dino treat. So she squeezed the crystal as hard as she could and she wished she could get out of there in a hurry. There was no spinning or dizzy feeling this time. Instead, she found herself in a rocket ship hurtling away from the earth at a fantastic speed. She looked back and saw her home planet getting smaller and smaller. Where in the world have I wished myself to now, she wondered. When she could no longer see the earth behind her, she looked out of the front of the ship and saw a strange planet with rings around it coming into view. The rocket seemed to be doing everything automatically, so she just sat back and waited for whatever was to come next. The ship landed on a platform in the middle of a city made of bright, shiny metal. There were three suns in the sky and a loud hum, like machinery, was coming from all the buildings. Alyssa came down the ladder from the ship and was met by a large robot who moved around on one wheel. Welcome to the planet No Workus, said the robot in a buzzing sort of voice. Here, you will have no jobs to do and no responsibilities. We robots do all the work here. You may do whatever you wish. No one will ask anything of you, he said. You are the only human to ever visit our planet. Alyssa didn't think that sounded too bad. She could lay around all day and wouldn't have to take orders from anybody. I'll give it a try, she said, and the robot left. Alyssa wandered through the cold metal streets and looked in the cold metal buildings where all the cold metal robots were busy doing whatever it was they were doing. And she began to get a little lonely and homesick. And she wondered if she had made a big mistake wishing for the things she had. She certainly wasn't any happier here. Then she heard something whirring and clacking and grinding behind her. She turned to see a crazy looking robot coming at her. His arms were swinging and Alyssa felt one cold pincher grab her shoulder. She was trying to run, but the robot had a firm grip on her arm. She knew she dropped the crystal. She knew she was done for now. The crystal had shattered on the cold metal street and the robot was shaking her and calling her name. Alyssa, 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 it kept saying. And then she woke up. 
She was in her big comfortable chair at home and her mother was gently tapping her shoulder and saying, Alyssa, Alyssa, wake up. It's almost time for supper. It had all been a dream. She was safe and had never been so happy to see her mom. She hugged and kissed her mother, then ran down the hall to the baby's room and kissed him too. Alyssa went running through the house looking for her brother, hoping maybe she could get him to tease her or pick a fight with her, anything at all. She was just so happy to be home. Alyssa had learned a lot about herself today. She knew now that her life really wasn't so bad, that it was pretty good actually, and there was no place she would rather be than home. The end. Whew. Sam. That was a story. Wes, what did you think? I thought that was a great story. That was a great use of imagination to help me imagine going lots of different places. So, yeah, did, that how, was my favorite part. How did you feel the first time you read that story, Sam? Well, I felt scared at first. I thought she was going to end up a dino treat, but then it turns out it was all a dream. Yeah. But my favorite part of the whole thing was that she hugged her mom real big at the end and she loved being around her family even though sometimes it was annoying sure we all it's all nice to be around our grown-ups and the the people that we appreciate for sure so absolutely i can tell you looking at the comments on the facebook live i think a lot of people appreciated the voices that you brought to the different characters sometimes that makes reading more fun as if you can really imagine yourself as the other characters absolutely my kiddos at home love that too So, Sam, can you give us a little bit of a preview of the next book that you're going to read at 1130 Central Time? Yep, yeah, absolutely. The book at 1130 is called um, Science Close-Up Minerals. So it's all about minerals and crystals and gemstones. And it's actually a nonfiction book, meaning it's based on facts. So it'll help us take a close look at what are those um, mineral crystals that exist in our world and um, a couple of fun facts about those. Very cool, well, we're looking forward to it. Sam, uh, I think I'm gonna let you go here uh, so you can get ready for your next storytelling event. For everyone Mm -hmm. listening at home, there's a lot more Saturday Science activities that you can check out online. If you see the link that we put in this post, that will take you to some interactive elements that you can do now or later. And then if you come back in, oh, let's say about five minutes or so, we'll do some live microscopy demonstrations with my friend Dan Murphy, where maybe we'll get a chance to look at some crystals very close up. In the meantime, thank you for joining us for Saturday Science at Home. I hope you are enjoying your morning, and we will see you again soon.